It isn't a brain supplement, but it's still going to help prevent you from developing life-altering dementia. You see, dementia is a multifactorial disease, and yet there's one factor that not only protects you from dementia, but also protects you from heart disease. I'm talking about your blood pressure. Let's discuss the link between blood pressure and dementia, and then we'll get into the supplement to add to your food. So, how does blood pressure relate to your dementia risk? Let's find out. In a study of astounding scale, researchers recruited 34,000 participants over the age of 40 from across rural villages. All these people had high blood pressure and were randomly assigned to usual care or a more intensive blood pressure lowering regimen, including blood pressure medications. Don't worry, smashing dementia doesn't require drugs. You won't be sprinkling drugs over your food unless, well, that's your style. Not here to judge. The big picture here is that one group did not reduce their blood pressure much and the other reduced their blood pressure under 130 over 80. In fact, we can see the data here for systolic blood pressure. That's the top number in your blood pressure reading. The purple are the people on the usual care without intensive blood pressure medication, and the dashed yellow line is those in the intervention group. We can clearly see that there's a big difference in blood pressure over the four years of the study. The usual care sits around 150, and the intervention group was over 20 points lower, around 130 units. Okay, the setting is set. A big difference in blood pressure. What happens to dementia? We can lean on this table. Don't worry, it's easy to read and we can focus on just the top here. See the primary outcome? Under it is our outcome of interest, so dementia. Now, comparing the people in both groups, the risk ratio is 0.85, which means there's a 15% reduced risk of dementia between the two groups. Now, this is an unadjusted analysis, and although this is a randomized controlled trial, this is also a long one, four years. So the researchers adjusted for potential confounding factors like age, sex, smoking, weight, and more. I'll list them on the screen. After all those adjustments, some of which contribute to dementia risk, a 12% risk reduction still occurred. That means that the group that reduced their blood pressure more had a protection from dementia. Pretty impressive. Okay, fascinating, but why does blood pressure relate to dementia? Well, in fact, it's not as simple as high blood pressure causes dementia, as we'll soon see. But addressing the high blood pressure, that means that the force exerted on your vasculature, the cardiovascular system, is day in, day out, more extreme than normal. In the brain, but also across the body, this force can damage the cells that line the blood vessels. Your blood vessels are primarily defined from a cellular perspective by a single lining of endothelial cells that help control the vasculature size, as in opening and tightening of the vasculature. Below them and below a structural section of proteins is a series of smooth muscle cells. These cells enact uh, the endothelial cells bidding. So as force is applied to the endothelial cells, three things happen. Probably more, but we'll stick to these three. One, a primary molecule that endothelial cells release called nitric oxide is reduced. This molecule would normally open the blood vessels, reducing blood pressure, but Constant high blood pressure causes such continuous stress that the cells eventually reduce nitric oxide generation, exacerbating the problem. That might also be tied to the constant pressure applied, also leading to an overwhelming level of damaging molecule production called reactive oxygen species, causing oxidative stress. This oxidative stress is characterized by these ROS, or reactive oxygen species, damaging the interior of the endothelial cell, along with damaging the smooth muscle cells nearby. This can also reduce nitric oxide production, by the way. Since the brain is filled with finer blood vessels, it means that the brain is particularly susceptible. Finally, these cells also begin producing more inflammatory molecules called cytokines that attract immune cells to the region, increasing the damage from the activated immune cells. Well, actually, let me uh, quick mention a last one, which I find the most fascinating. An increase in the permeability of these endothelial cells. This matters a lot because your brain is protected from the rest of your body through a blood-brain barrier, which involves the same lining of endothelial cells as well as a tight wall of brain cells called astrocytes. The pressure exerted on these cells causes this tight tethering between cells, creating this impermeable barrier to loosen. 
Now, things that might be especially harmful for the brain can leak through and be found in the brain where they wouldn't otherwise be. Think like bacterial proteins as one example, or even immune cells, they're not supposed to be there. The point being, there are many mechanisms by which blood pressure can affect the health of the brain, like increasing the risk of dementia. But if you're thinking the lower the better, then there's also literature indicating that low blood pressure may be a risk as well. The reason is that the perfusion of the brain, the blood to the brain, may be diminished, leading to a lack of oxygen delivery. And I should mention that there's still more to be explored on that front, so I'd consider high blood pressure to have more evidence against it in relation to dementia. So we've seen the evidence that blood pressure affects our dementia risk, and we've discussed in pretty basic terms the mechanisms of blood pressure on blood vessel and the brain. Now, what can be done? Let me first point out that if you're looking for a more in-depth look on this topic, like uh, looking at smoking habits or age or blood sugar levels or other factors change this relationship between blood pressure and dementia, spoiler, they do, uh, check out the extended version of this analysis that you're watching. You can find it in my Physionic Insiders program, along with access to all my work, my private podcasts, weekly written research reviews, summaries, actionable takeaways, a dementia risk calculator, guides, templates, live sessions with me, and man oh man, talk about value. Anyway, to join, just uh, click the link in the description box. I'd really love to have you there. Here's what you can do to reduce your dementia risk through reducing your blood pressure. Well, for one, exercise of any type reduces blood pressure, but I've covered uh, the most effective exercises in the past. I'll link them below for you. Another major factor is simply dropping body fat, which is accomplished through nutrition primarily. Both of these can have a major role in reducing blood pressure, but let's assume that you have those in check and you're looking for an additional supplement to help you along the way. The answer is potassium chloride salt. This is especially helpful for people who like using salt in their meals. Substituting with the potassium chloride salt, say 25% or 50%, although 25% will be difficult to notice the difference compared to regular salt, and yet it will slash your blood pressure. The reason is due to the potassium itself having a positive effect on your kidneys primarily. But be careful with potassium. It shouldn't be exclusively consumed, and people with kidney problems should be especially careful. So, focusing on a blend that's only 25% potassium chloride helps prevent issues while reaping the benefits. It's such a simple switch, yet it'll help protect you from dementia through its blood pressure lowering effects. More on that in just a bit. So, the takeaways here are High blood pressure, so 140 to 150 over 80 to 90, is a contributor to dementia, and lowering blood pressure can reduce dementia risk. Two, you can reduce blood pressure through any type of exercise, as well as any nutrition that leads to fat loss if you're overweight. But if you want a simple supplement that has great evidence behind its blood pressure lowering effects, check out a 25% mixture of potassium chloride salt especially as a replacement for your regular salt to your food. But, I mean, look, don't take my word for it. I cover the effects of potassium on your blood pressure through several studies right here. And like I said, dementia is multifactorial. So learn more on the factors right here. I'll see you over there. Thanks for hanging out.